We're Gina and Steven with Live Deeper 10X, and we're traveling the world one house sit at a time. Welcome to today. Wait, I interrupted you. It's our house sitting day. We're gonna be spending the day showing you how we take care of our temporary animals and let you know what it's like to house sit. So stay tuned. Especially in this big place, this amazing, awesome, wonderful place. Good morning. It is Tuesday and we are doing our house sitting. We have a few more days here in Cyprus as house sitters and then we're heading off to Switzerland to do another house sit. And I just wanted to greet you with this beautiful Mediterranean morning. And you can actually see over here the sunrise that's coming up. Isn't that amazing? And then we have George. George, don't get stuck. What you doing? What you doing? Oh. These are the joys of house sitting, to be greeted in the morning by George, who I have a feeling is more dog than cat. So let's go down and greet the dogs. Let's see what they do when they get to the top of the stairs. Who is it? first. There you go. And this is Gromit. He has to sleep outside. So you would think that we have like a total menage menagerie of animals and we do, but we love it. We love being around pets and we love being around dogs especially because it makes us um, feel like we're giving back in a meaningful way. This is Abby. Say good morning, Abby. Abby's a little skittish, but we're gonna open our windows and feel the fresh air. You can already feel the breeze coming in. So lovely. Doors opening. I'm going to get my coffee started. we get to wake up to at least for the last week when we get to watch the sunrise the water is actually a little chillier than the, um, the ocean in fact we swam in the ocean and it was almost 80 degrees in there and this is probably sitting more at like below 70s so we're gonna actually try to take a dip in the pool a little later but look at listen to all the beautiful birds Quite amazing, the homeowners have really built a beautiful home. And the reason why I'm able to show you the home is because the actual house is up for sale. This is Otis. Otis, say good morning. Otis, sit. Otis, you are so handsome. You are so handsome. Otis is a dog that is a hunting dog. And he runs like an Olympic sprinter. And this morning you will see how when we put him off his leash, he will run and run and run and will be gone for hours. And this is what he's saying. He's saying, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to do my run. It's definitely a challenge with four dogs versus one dog. And when we go to Switzerland, we'll only have one dog, which probably will feel like a totally different experience. And this is Steven saying good morning. He's at his, um, his balcony uh, sharing his joy with the world. 
and these guys are ready. Yes. So, are you ready? I shall come to meet thee. Yes, yes. Don't we all want to be greeted that way in the morning? We all want to have that same unconditional love. All right, are we ready? Let me show, let me point out that this one you see now, you won't see him for like three more hours. Everybody sit. Sit. That's an intensity right there. Yes. And then Birdie needs to sit. Birdie, sit. Birdie, sit. Sit down. Good boy, Birdie. Good sit. Are you ready? Wallace, you need to go first. Okay, let's go. Watch Birdie. There you go. She's gone. And he's off. Oh, and then we've got George. George goes walking with us. George is a pack animal as well, and so George loves being on walks with us. That's um, Otis. That's he's Otis, very, that's and he's animal. about a kilometer away at this point. Look. Somewhere through the olive Holy trees. Cow. Did you see how fast he just ran? There's a crazy dog running. <laughs> Uh, these trees are mostly walnut. I they're almond trees. Almond. They're mostly almond. Almond trees. Almond trees on this side here. Birdie's over there somewhere. Somewhere over in this field. And these are olive trees. Pretty young olive trees, I believe. Is Otis. Just not for oh, a huge distance. Let's oh, give let's him a moment. Give him a so moment. let me take a moment to share with you that you probably think it's unsafe uh, for us to have the dogs off the leash here. We have been told by the homeowner that we have to take the leash off of Otis, the fast dog, at least on mon Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays because he has to run. He's one of those dogs that just has to run. Yeah, he's a 20 kilometer a day dog. Right, and so if we don't take him off the leash, then it's uh, he suffers mentally he suffers literally so um now what happens on wednesdays and sundays however is vital to keep him on the leash what they call them here are shooters um there are shooters on wednesday and sunday going after those things right there there are certain kinds of birds that live in these fields it's like a partridge but like something like that yeah we have on two feet they run. so there are shooters out which are hunters but it's like right around us right in these fields and um so on those days you can't let otis run because he could get shot yep. I, I mean just taking our walks we feel like we could get shot so that, yeah, that's a little entry them. they're all very close by they're away. and then with the cats there's two of them there's George here and there's Abby that I introduced you to earlier this morning. And George brought Abby to the house. Actually, Abby is his girlfriend. <laughs> and we'll try to show you video of their, their little affection. I feel like Abby has boundary issues. Oh yeah, <laughs> so, she does. So we're gonna have to, I mean, I don't know why that is, but she's very affectionate towards George, but nobody else. Come on, Coop. She's a little skittish. So every animal that we've taken care of over the last seven months has their own unique personality and i feel like in many ways they make us kind of learn a little bit about ourselves you take care of the animals the way the owners the family members want them taken care of so george even though you wouldn't do it that way necessarily correct those things that you have to do yes it's their family members so they are in charge of how those uh, pets are cared for Makes you happy? Taking, well, I love taking care of animals. And if we were traveling and just doing travel and not having the ability to like love on animals and you know take care of them, it wouldn't feel the same. So this is really, it really helps me feel more connected.
So carob trees are some kind of magical plant that creates something akin to chocolate. There are these pods, which I don't see anywhere, and somehow you take those and can do something fancy with it and turn it into something that tastes like chocolate. Oh, if I could just take a bunch of those pods and do that myself, I need to look it up and see if that's possible. Leave us a note in the comments about how you take the pod from a carob tree and turn it into chocolate. Here's the other crazy cat. That's George's girlfriend now. Admittedly, she is more than just George's girlfriend. What I have to do here is get the birds their stuff set up to go, and they have a fairly intricate feeding um, system. And it starts with the white bread. There she is. So I guess you probably all knew that all calicos are female. I'm not sure why that is or where that came from. Okay, this is where the bird food resides, right here. First take these two slices of bread. These are like wormies, little wormies, but they're not living. This is the little garden area here. Before they built this house, there was none of this vegetation, of course, and no birds, and now they are everywhere. Those will be gone within an hour. I would not mind eating them myself, quite frankly. And this delectable concoction goes here. There's still some left from the other day. So they have plenty to fill their fat little stomachs up. Now we need to water. So as it turns out, this nozzle, or at least the hose came out of the bottom of this nozzle, see? Swinging bird feeder, evidence that the birds have been joining us this morning. So the homeowner did say, be careful not to pull the hose out of there. And I hadn't yet, but it came out. And then I haven't yet found a way to get it back in there. This one's really goody. There is a, hose out by the infinity pool which I will go and see if um, that's crazy cat it worked perfect hose replacement success the Cypriot Sun is rising dogs have been walked for the morning we've gotten the plants done we've gotten the birds fed birdie's wagging his tail birdie Gina's gonna take a shower then we're gonna make ourselves breakfast there's grommet. Then we'll feed the cats, feed the dogs, um, and then who knows from there. So next on our list is to feed these cats, which normally eat around 7, 7.30. And that's grommet. The most impressive thing to me about these dogs, and even if Otis were here because he's still running around somewhere outside, is that I can put this whole thing of cat food down for grommet and not a single one of them will touch this cat food. Well, Wallace might, but it would be after the grommet's finished. Here's a crazy cat. That's Abby. Now let's, we mentioned earlier that Abby and George are boyfriend and girlfriend. Okay, dog time. This is the fun time. Steven's gonna handle medications. I'm gonna handle the dog food. Okay, all right. Wallace? 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 
like the um, Florida Gators color, colors, blue and orange. I'm not sure what it is, but I'm giving it to them. Uh, it's Eponese. It's also uh, <coughs> seizure related. Now this is the fun part. Steven enjoys doing this part. So you start with the oldest, who's the alpha dog, and go to the youngest. Okay, sit. Wait. Okay, go ahead, Bernie! Yay! Sit. Okay, go ahead, get the ball, Wallace, and then Cooper! Sit. Okay, go ahead, yay! What's up, George? What's up? And then, this is always fun to watch because Cooper acts as if he hasn't eaten in like three months. He's got the wrong nose for this bowl, so most of the food goes out. And right now we're just waiting for Otis to come back from his jaunt out in the fields and he'll get his food last. And that's how you feed four dogs. We have to give props to the homeowner because they have done an excellent job of training this, these dogs to know what they should and should not do. And it's really impressive because when you have four dogs that are this big, you really do need to be the one in charge. Do we know what our pecking order is? We have no pecking order. We have no pecking order. We're equally pecked. Oh. Thing, our big thing today is trying to figure out the best way to get Ethan um, from the Estados Unidos to here. No, nope, not to Cyprus. Not to Cyprus, because no. he's not coming to Cyprus. No, he's coming to Luxembourg, which happens to be the second most expensive country in Europe and the smallest country. And we're doing it at the worst time of year, Christmas. They're all here, except for Abby, who's already eating. Look at this. So funny. They are here and waiting. Otis! Nope. Nope. That would be Cooper. Cooper! Okay, go ahead. Good boy! Otis! This is a lot. This is a lot, good fella. Okay, go ahead. Good boy! Yay! Sit. Good. Wait. Okay. Good boy. And that's how it's done. This is she needs a transparency workshop. Yeah. She's like I can't stare at you. She's literally a crazy cat. I mean, she's crazy. Just give him some space. Yeah. Just let him eat. He'll be fine. Seriously. It's really, you should let, just let him eat. That's all she did, Steven. I just want to miss all of each other. Everybody sit. Wallace, good job. Stay right there. So this is lunchtime, I mean, this is what we do. So there are pros and cons to pet sitting. Uh, the pros are you have amazing places to stay, but it depends on the nature of the pets. And the location too. And, and yeah, it depends on the location. I mean, some places you will be a pet sitter for one cat that doesn't even like people, so you don't have any animal responsibilities. The homeowners know it. They just want someone to be there. So they say, okay, just do these things and then you're totally free. Others, They've got lots of animals, lots, of, lots of responsibilities, yes. Definitely schedule. Like these guys have a bit, very specific schedule. Mm -hmm. If you want the flexibility of not having to be responsible for other things, then maybe house sitting isn't for you. But we love um, just being in a place that's completely off the traditional tourist trap kind of mm -hmm. path. Because the places that we stay are not usually within line of tourist destinations. However, most of the time we select places that do have public transportation so that we can get to those places. Like I've already started looking at several very well-known villages and towns outside of our house in Germany 
that are going to be a train right away. We will we will literally select those places that have a bus stop right down the street yep, or some place that we can ride a bike to pick up a bus or train so that we don't have to worry about any of those other things. Mm -hmm. And then there's those house sits like this one that let us use their vehicles. And yep. so when you have that, that's extra special. And we are so grateful that the homeowners trust us to have us let us use their car. But it gives us a little bit more flexibility and freedom to go to the grocery store, to check out the local area, sometimes even do a half hour to an hour excursion away from where the home is. Always keeping in mind that whenever we do those, to stay on to stay on schedule for the pets. Lots of room for hanging clothes, as with so many other places outside the United States. The sun and the wind are the preferred methods for drying. They do have a dryer, but we like to... I love hanging clothes. Use the natural Makes stuff. Makes me feel like a pioneer. Oh, nice. And it always smells so much pressure. That's a big towel. It is a big towel. This is a very special house. It's a very modern house and it's a house that's up for sale. So if you're interested as you're watching us do this tour and buying this house, you should check it out online and we'll link it in the description so that you can check out what the cool price is for this big, beautiful house. So I found this house to be very cool because the owner of this home actually designed it for his artwork. In this room in particular, in the dining room, the, the painting that we see across the dining room was actually supposed to be a window. But because he loved that painting so much and he needed a place for it, he told the architect, nope, a window will not go there. Instead, we're gonna put this piece of art. So that's one of his favorite pieces. I mean, you really do feel like you're in a museum, like a really cool art museum when you're here. Um, all the pieces are so unique and so different because this one clearly is made with a certain type of cloth and he put plexiglass in front of it in order to protect it. So that's why when the house sells, he's prepared to sell the house with all of his artwork. So here is one of his other favorite pieces. And he said he would probably take this one with him. He got this one in the Middle East. I don't know the name of it, but again, he is gonna provide us with a portfolio of all of the different pieces that he has. So it's a beautiful, open, wide living room area that's actually quite comfortable. And when you sit here, the sunsets are remarkable. To be able to sit on these sofas and look out and watch the sun setting, it's like watching a movie every night. It's really quite lovely. This is the TV room, and I think one of Steven's favorite pieces in here is this very cool sculpture of what looks like a mentor, right? Yeah? Yeah. And what do you like about this piece? Uh, something very simplistic, like it looks real and it's thought provoking because he's thinking deeply. He looks like he's something. sucking on his arm. Oh, uh, I think he's just resting a big old heavy head. Yeah, that's true. You have horns, I guess you do have to rest your head. These are massive dog beds for four dogs that are quite large and it's very cute at night when you're watching them cuddle up because two will cuddle up on one bed and that's very sweet. We're going up to the second floor now. This house has six bedrooms, two downstairs, right? One, two, no, three downstairs and three upstairs, including the master bedroom. And at night, when you're driving up, it's remarkable to see when all the lights are turned on. Now, this next piece is very creepy, especially at night, at nine o'clock when you're going to bed, but it's also quite cool. I mean, goodness, even standing next to it kind of creeps me out just a little bit. <laughs> this particular piece was done by a very young Italian artist. Italian, I think? Mm, Maybe French. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't remember. But he, um, the owner of the home walked by this piece multiple times and fell in love with it. And so he decided to buy it and bring it back. And they said that it actually cost more to ship it here than the actual purchase of the art piece. And that was because it was a very young, brand new artist. He was either 19 or 20. Yeah. This might have been the first thing he did. And yeah. so he was just thrilled to actually have someone who wanted to purchase it. So Yeah, very cool. But again, as you're walking through the house, it really does feel like you're in a beautiful art museum. And he really did a great job. In fact, he explained to us that this house didn't take very long to build because most of it is concrete laid with exposed steel beams. 
And so they didn't have to put a lot into it, although he loved ink, he loved circular feels. And so when you see the house from the outside, it's got a very circular feel to it. All the windows are kind of bowed out. Um, the, the shape of the house is very round, which is very cool. And then the last piece I'm gonna show you that I really like is the one that's in our bedroom. So forgive, because it's kind of messy in there. <laughs> this is it, it's a very deli. And I will also link that down in the description, but it's really, it's a 3D version uh, piece of art. And the woman of the house, if you will, um, bought this piece and loved it. Um, it turned out that her husband isn't so crazy about it, but she absolutely loves it. And he apparently, he's French, and so apparently he has quite a few of these different kinds of three-dimensional pieces, which is very cool. So all of these pieces can be made available to you if you are interested in buying this lovely home. Well, that was a great day. It's our normal sort of day when we're doing house sitting. It's a little different from place to place, but that's what it looks like in Cyprus. So check back because tomorrow we're gonna to be heading up to the northern part of the island, Lanarka, with lots of very cool things to see and do there. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. Turns out you gotta hit the bell to actually get the videos. So we'll see you there. So we need to get ready for tonight. We're gonna get cleaned up. <laughs> we forgot the soap. So we had to do things the old fashioned way. Oh well.